So before we get started, let's do, talk a little bit about um, the beginnings of rocketry. Okay, so the very first historical accounts of rockets were used in ancient China in 1232 AD, made by attaching fireworks to long arrows. And these fire arrows were used by uh, ancient Chinese soldiers to defend against invaders. And uh, to this day, rockets in China, in, in Chinese, uh, literally translates to fire arrows. I bet you didn't know that. You know what? I'm going to take this off because uh, I'm getting really, really <laughs> frustrated. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's very hard to, to do a lesson completely in, um, in a helmet. All right. So a rocket system is made up of four major uh, systems. Okay, so we got the structural system, which is um, uh, the body and the shell and the nose cone and the fins. And what they do is they protect your mechanisms and they also uh, redirect airflow around the rocket when it's in the atmosphere. Okay, uh, we also have a propulsion system, and the propulsion system is uh, known known as um, the the part that makes the rocket go. Okay, we got the the rocket engines, we got the fuel, we got oxidizer fuel and oxidizer are um kind of like the the petrol systems in in your car right when when they ignite they uh, create little explosions well in, in in this case of a rocket it's a really big explosion but we'll get to that later we have a payload system so a payload is the part of the rocket that we want to leave in space or we want to send to space or we want to send to the moon in in our case it could be your astronauts or your satellites or your hubble space telescope things like that things that we want to send to space and do things like make science or um, uh, put put equipment around in space like gps satellites that's your payload okay uh, and for a spacecraft with people on board uh, this payload would also include things like your life support system, making oxygen available to the crew, having food and water, and uh, other hygiene facilities for your astronauts. And finally, we have the guidance system. And the guidance system is extremely important because it, uh, it contains the computers, the sensors, and the devices that help navigate your spacecraft uh, to point it in the right direction, right? Because if the thrusters are not pointing down, then uh, you're not going to be heading to space today, right? <laughs> Let's see if we can uh, get some uh, engagement with everybody. Let's see if we can get some uh some people asking questions let's have a look da, da, da. just getting things sorted okay all right any questions so far helmet thing yes that was my helmet. <laughs> all right yes yes we are uh this is a simulator this is a simulator called kerbal space program it is a bit of uh, it is a computer game that teaches you how to fly a uh, a rocket ship all right good 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 we shall continue so how fast does a rocket ship fly well uh over here i have taken apart uh an example of a, a lego rocket it is a model of the saturn v rocket all right um as long as you produce more thrust so thrust is just like when we did the airplane episode right thrust is how much power how much force you're uh, directing out of the exhaust uh, of your of your rocket or your, of your airplane and as long as the power and the force of that thrust is more than the weight of the rocket then you're going to go flying does that make sense if it as long as the power of your thrust is bigger than the weight of your rocket then it flies but then here's a problem okay the problem is that in order to make it to orbit, we need to fly really, really quickly. Okay, quicker than anything any aircraft uh, can imagine. Right. So, if you know that your thrust um, uh, is making you fly and your weight is what's holding you back, then what should we do as we are flying a rocket in order to make it move faster? Well, it's very simple. We have an idea called staging, and staging is what makes the rocket lighter as it goes faster. Okay. 
staging is uh, the reason why we are able to separate these rockets into several uh, pieces. Okay, so this version of the uh, Saturn V rocket you can see that there are three very distinct stages here. There are actually more stages, but um, here are the three major ones that you can think about. Um, when this rocket is completely put together, stacked on top of each other, like, like they, they stack on top of each other. I can't show you now because it's going to go outside the video. Um, so the biggest part of the rocket is right down the bottom, right? And here is also the biggest thrusters. Now imagine if it is flying into space, right, with all the all the different parts of the air um, of the spacecraft stacked on top of these thrusters, and it's flying into space. It's extremely heavy, right? And what's more, as you are burning fuel, you are getting lighter and lighter and lighter, and eventually, this whole bottom stage will run out of fuel. Okay. Once it runs out of fuel, then what are we going to do with all these fuel tanks and safety systems and electronics and hydraulic systems and shells like armored shells, protective shells? How are we go what are we going to do with the rest of the rocket once it's run out of fuel? Well, we just simply detach it, right? This part just detaches and falls back into earth. And that leaves just the top half of the rocket, okay? So this top half of the rocket is flying into space, and the same thing is happening. You can see that between each stage is more, more rockets, right? It doesn't just snap off and then there's no, no more part of the rocket. The end of each stage is another rocket, well, another set of rockets. So as this goes further and further off into space, this middle part of the rocket is going to also run out of fuel. And then when that runs out of fuel, we want to make the rocket even lighter. So we detach this part and this falls back onto Earth as well. And then finally, you have just that nose part of the rocket. And uh, the, the nose part will actually detach uh, like this. Whoops. We just detach the, um, the, the nose. Um, the launch rescue system, I'll, I'll, we can talk more about that later. Uh, and also, it, it detaches the, the rest of this rocket until you just have this little triangle at the end, which is the, the capsule that, um, that the astronauts actually land back on Earth in. Right? So this is how uh, a rocket works to move faster and faster in space in order to reach orbital uh, speed, orbital velocity. Um, they need to make sure that as they are spending the fuel from the rest of the rocket, they need to detach or separate or stage different parts of the rocket in order to make it lighter and lighter and move faster and faster. Because remember, it's a thrust to weight ratio that makes the rocket go faster. If it's really heavy, it doesn't matter how big your thrust is, uh, it's not going to move super quickly because you're really, really heavy. You're holding it back. But as, as you're losing fuel, you're not going to need half of the rocket anyway. So you chuck it out, you jettison it, and then you keep some rockets that keep t uh, taking it further and further off into space. Okay, any questions so far? Uh, do you record? Okay, the game is called Kerbal Space Program. How tall is the Lego rocket? It's about a meter and a half, okay? Uh, a meter, a meter and a bit, I think, uh, this, this Lego rocket. Doo -doo -doo. I'll just put this away. Any other questions? Feel free to ask questions and I will answer them live, just like how, um, uh, uh, how uh, Alex has asked some questions uh, in the, in the um, chat. How much does it cost? Uh, the, the rocket? Um, probably like 100, 100 and something dollars, something like that. Okay, so let's, uh, today we're going to um, do two missions. The first mission is we're going to launch a satellite into space. Second mission is we're going to actually attempt to land on the moon. Okay, so uh, there is entirely a possibility that I will crash. Okay, so uh, please don't hope too hard that I crash. I might just crash. Okay.
<laughs> so here we're going to uh, have a look at our space center. So in your space center, uh, in this uh, version of uh, the game, we have what's called the vehicle assembly building where rockets are made. And then just like in the real space center, after you make a rocket, it gets towed out to the end here into the launch pad and then gets launched into space. So we're going to go into here. We're going to look at our very first rocket design, keeping in mind how we design rockets. Remember I talked about before how we are going to design our rocket. So you see this rocket? Okay, I might move this so that you can see a bit clearly. Is that better? I think that's probably better. Okay, so I'm going to answer some questions in a moment, but before we do that, let's have a look at uh, the close-up view of our rocket. So here we have the nose cone of our rocket. And it is designed in a way so that it just encompasses our payload system. Remember, the structural system is our nose cone, but the payload system is here. It is a, a satellite with some uh, um, solar panels and some batteries and some uh, little um, uh, navigation thrusters. We also have a command pod here with an astronaut inside. So a lot of the time when you are launching rockets uh, or launching satellites into space, you don't need an astronaut. You just launch it up and then just leave the satellite up there. You don't have to have an astronaut. But we are going to have an astronaut here because we're going to demonstrate something called a spacewalk as well. And a spacewalk is pretty, pretty intense. This rocket is designed with uh, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six stages, okay? When we are launching up into the air, uh, unlike the Saturn V rocket, Saturn V rocket, we're going to detach these sideways boosters first, all right? So these sideways boosters are going to detach sideways, okay? This is, this is called um, parallel staging. Parallel staging is where the rockets are detaching from the side of the rocket. How we saw the, um, the Apollo rocket, the, the Saturn V, that one detaches in series, which means that you're detaching uh, the, the rocket vertically. Does that make sense? So we're doing a parallel stage. We're going to do two sets of parallel stages. We're going to detach two of these side rockets first and then detach the other two side rockets second. And then we should have enough thrust to continue on reaching our orbit, okay? After that, we're going to detach our satellite, leave our satellite in orbit, and then hopefully uh, do a spacewalk as well with our brave, brave little astronaut on top of this mighty rocket. Let's take some questions before, uh, oh, no, that's uh, the mini people about to do, yes, yes. They are not going to crash. Not with me at the controls. I've landed planes in Tokyo. All right, let's have a look at this. All right, let's go into launch the rocket and see what it's like. So when we're launching a rocket, there's a few things that we really need to think closely about. Um, well, here is the rocket, okay? And there's the space center in the background. And there's the ocean, okay? So can I ask, does anyone know which direction you need to fire a rocket in order to orbit the Earth? Well, which direction to best fire your rocket to orbit the Earth? Who wants to have a guess? Does anyone uh, have any, any um, suggestions? Which direction do you need to fly the rocket? Not up. <laughs> up is, a, is, a, is the, the good start. But do you fly north, south, east or west? with your rocket in order to best um, uh, make orbital velocity. Any, any suggestions? No? Nope. Wow, okay. So in order to reach orbit, it is best to fly from west to east. And why is that? The reason is because that is the, 
the the direction that the earth is spinning the earth is spinning from west to east so if you are also sending your rocket from e west to east then you are taking advantage of the rotation of the earth because believe it or not the earth is rotating really really quickly so if you try to fly from east to west then you are going to uh, uh, have to work against the rotation of the earth and then you're going to waste a whole bunch of fuel whereas if you're launching from west to east then you are following the direction of the earth's spin and you are going to uh, uh, have an easier time reaching orbit now as i uh, when i press the space bar i'm going to start launching this rocket and now i want you to pay close attention to this left hand side okay because some bars are going to appear and they're going to show me how much fuel is left at each stage okay as soon as the fuel runs out i need to release that fuel that that stage of the rocket otherwise i'll be wasting a lot of fuel all right Everyone excited? Want to see this rocket explode? Let's go. Okay, throttling up. And a launch. All right, we are reaching 40 meters a second, 70 meters a second. We are starting to make our turn. This is called a gravity turn towards the east. The reason we make a turn towards the east is because, whoa, oh my goodness. It's starting to wobble a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, you can see it's starting to break the sound barrier, causing a lot of um, um, uh, effects on the air. You can see now I'm running out of fuel on two of my stages. And now two of my rockets have completely run out of fuel. So I now I need to detach it. And they are going to fall back safely into Earth. Usually, if that's the case. Whoa! And my rocket has suddenly just completely lost balance. And that's not supposed to happen. Whoa, it is now pointing in the wrong direction. The reason is because um, a rocket, when it is launching into space, it needs to make sure that you are maintaining good control and good attitude uh, against the airflow as well. Okay, so let's try that one more time. Okay, so let's go over here. Like I said, this, this is unlike Flight Simulator. I'm allowed to make cheating moves here okay so we are launching again we're heading towards east all right this is now a good attitude it's not wobbling it's not not doing any fancy moves we are starting to break the sound barrier this is our surface speed which is how many meters per second can you imagine we're flying at almost 400 500 meters per second now running out of petrol in two of the engines and they detach now we have two more engines well three engines because we still have that central engine left take some questions <laughs> go excellent okay we are heading off in the right direction we are heading off into space all right now you see there is a rarefied air going across my uh, um, uh, my rockets because we are heading so quickly through the atmosphere it's a good thing I have this protective shell around my astronauts otherwise they would be toast right now this is the picture of the ast oh well, you can't see the picture of the astronaut because it's behind me but that's okay now we look at this map this map is showing us the trajectory of our rocket it's reaching 200 thousand meters into the um into orbit and now i have just cut off the engines okay so this little symbol here ksat one this represents creator academy satellite one it is going to reach this apex if i don't do anything right you have a look the rocket has turned off its engines uh, and it's going to reach this apex, but then what's it going to do? It's going to crash into the ocean. So in order to make it reach orbit, we need to do something called an orbital burn. And in order to do, do that, we go where we reach the apoapsis of our orbit, which is the, the tip, the, the apex of our, of our flight. And then we're going to plan a maneuver. We're going to increase our speed 
until we are doing a circular orbit around Earth. Okay, so let's see what I what I just did then. So what I did was this blue line represents where our rocket is currently heading if I don't do anything. So it's going to go up and then it's going to go down. It's going to crash into the ocean. In order to make orbit, you don't just keep on firing your engines because if you keep on firing engines, you'll just keep going further and further and further out and then come crashing back into Earth, right? What you need to do in order to reach orbit is you need to go to your orbital height. So in our case, it is 200,000 uh, kilometers in the atmosphere. And then we're going to burn sideways, okay? And then when I turn on the engines, you're going to see that this blue line is going to change. We're not going to land in the ocean. We're going to land further and further and further away in the ocean until eventually you're going to uh, keep falling towards Earth, but never actually reaching Earth because the Earth is curving faster than you falling. So that is how you do uh, you reach orbit. Does that make sense? Let's take some questions in the next two minutes while we are waiting. Um, no, I didn't crash. <laughs> All right. Good, good. Make sure you remember to like and subscribe, okay? Make sure you like and subscribe to this video so that we can make more of these videos in the future. Okay, we got two more minutes to burn, but it's a good thing that this is a computer game and I can speed up time. Du, du, du. All right, so right here, we are now throttling up, and we are going to try and circularize this orbit. And we've run out of fuel on two of our engines. We have just detached our final parallel stage. We go back into our orbital view, and you can see, do you see that? The blue line is growing. It's going for further and further before crashing into Earth. But eventually... It's going to go so far that it's not going to crash into Earth at all. It's going to keep going until I am in orbit and I will safely be in orbit and then, and then I can turn off my engines and I will never crash. Okay, that is how orbit works, uh, orbiting works. Uh, you can see now here the periapsis, that's the lowest point at which my aircraft will orbit this area. So now this blue line has made it so that instead of falling back into Earth, we are going to be circularizing Earth, orbiting Earth constantly. See? And that is how orbital mechanics works. Now that we are in orbit, we can do a few things. Firstly, we're going to detach our um, protective shell so that our astronaut and our satellite can be released. Uh, into uh, into space. Okay, so let's deploy our protective shell. Okay, look at that. I'm making all the sound effects as well. So uh, that's pretty awesome, right? All right, we can see now we have our satellite in here. We have our command pod. We're going to extend some solar panels. All right, it's looking good. And then we're going to um, position our rocket so that it is facing something called a normal. The normal is um, the, the perpendicular line to what you're orbiting. You see how I'm orbiting uh, the, the Earth from west to east? Now I'm facing north-south so that when I release the satellite, there's no chance of it crashing back onto me, right? If I, cra if I released it um, towards the east or west, then there's a chance that the satellite can crash back into me later on, right? So that would be silly. So here, satellite is up and open, and now all I have to do is decouple and chunk. All right, the satellite is now in orbit. This is kind of like what um, releasing a satellite is like in real life, except normally we don't have people on board. Here, we have someone on board, Whoa, something happened. Did you see that? I have no idea what happened. Whoa. <laughs> that satellite crashed into the top of my, um, my spaceship. 
and now uh, all that's left is a little booster. As you can see, space is very, very harsh and unpredictable. Who knows what will happen in this trip? All right, so we're going to do something cool. We're going to do a spacewalk. What is a spacewalk? Who wants to tell me what a spacewalk is? Does anyone know? Uh, let's have a look. Nope. Nope, nope. A spacewalk is where you climb outside your spacecraft while it is flying in space. It's extremely scary. Okay, watch this. Bing. All right. Now we are climbed out outside our space capsule. Taking some questions. Anyone got any questions? All right. So I want to tell you a little bit about spacewalks because on um, March 18, 1965, Alexei Leonov is the first human to do a spacewalk. I'm just going to put up his picture because this is, if you know, like, if, if this is not one of the most famous people that you know, then you need to reprioritize uh, the kind of people that you read about. Because this guy, this guy over here, he is an absolute legend. Um, he conducted the first ever spacewalk, and during that mission, he almost died several times, okay? So, so imagine you've only just invented rockets not long ago. Uh, so you strap yourself into a rocket, then you decide, well, let's just open the door and walk out into space, right? During that mission, he almost died because um, the air pressure inside his suit uh, caused him to inflate like a balloon, okay? So Alexei... He goes, opens the door, he steps outside, and then his suit starts inflating. It inflated so much that he couldn't fit back inside the spacecraft. Um, and in order to, to, to fit back in, he needed to release air from his spacesuit. Uh, so he desperately had to like undo some buttons and vent out some air. Uh, so that he can reduce his size enough to get back into his spacecraft. And while he was struggling, his body produced so much sweat that it splattered around inside his helmet, and then it got into his nostrils and into his face, and he couldn't wipe it because he had a space helmet on. And uh, it was really, really dangerous. Finally, when he got back into his space suit, uh, spacecraft and closed the door, everything failed inside his spacecraft. And then he crash-landed... Uh, in the Siberian wilderness where his heater wouldn't work and it was snowing and he had to fight off animals um, until someone can come and rescue him. So this guy is an absolute awesome, uh, awesome dude. Definitely check him out. His name is Alexei uh, Leonov and um, he only died like not very long ago, I, don't, I think. Uh, but now we're going to do our second mission, which is to fly to the moon. Let's have a look. Go back here. Let's go back to our space center. Any questions so far? Good. All right. So now we're going to fly to the moon, which is um, probably going to be about 11 times harder than what we just did. So there is a, uh, entirely a possibility that I will crash. So make sure you watch this video to the end. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe. Okay, so this, this rocket is built very similarly to our other rocket, except bigger. It's super big. It doesn't have the parallel staging. It doesn't have the rockets on the sides, but it has the bigger rockets down the bottom here. Whoops, I better turn it back onto this thing so that you can see clearly. So like I said, this rocket um, is designed more like the Apollo missions, right? It's um, more like the Saturn V, which is uh, all, all the stages are in series, uh, which means that they're all on, one to on top of each other. And then inside our payload here, we have a little uh, spacecraft that is designed to land on the moon. And of course, we have another brave astronaut in there who is uh, hoping 
to come back to Earth after our mission. But there are no guarantees because I am piloting. All right, let's. Uh, good luck. Good luck to this astronaut. <laughs> we're going to uh, try to fly to the moon. Now, when we're trying to fly to the moon, we do the first part very similarly to when we are launching a satellite. But instead of making just the orbit, we are going to increase our orbit to make it really um, uh, um, more eccentric. And then eventually that orbit is going to intercept with the moon's orbit. So let's have a look at where the moon is at the moment. So here's the Earth. There's our little um, satellite and our brave pilot who's doing a spacewalk. Uh, we are here in our space center. And the moon is over here. Okay, so in order to do a moon, a, a lunar orbit, um, I mean lunar landing, we should try to make it so that uh, the moon is at our 12 o'clock and the, um, the, the launching area is around about our 3 o'clock position. So I'm going to speed up time. Do, do, do. Speed up time. Ask me questions if you have any questions. All right. Here, this is good. This is about 5 a.m. in the morning. It's a good day. Good day to explore space and explore our um, <laughs> fatalities. <laughs> uh, Alicia, you are hilarious. Okay, let's have a look at this. Now we are launching into space with our very first stage. Here our spacecraft is now breaking the sound barrier. Look at the speed, look at our fuel on the left hand side and look at how high we are flying. Check the map to see what our apoapsis is. We want to cut off our engines at around about a uh, hundred thousand meters. Mm, about a hundred and twenty. Okay, that's done. All right. Whoa. Good thing we have a protective shell around our. Oh, we have Valentina Kerman. Valentina Kerman. Valentina is the name of the very first female uh, cosmonaut uh, that went into space. So that's why they named this character Valentina. As we land on the lunar surface, we are going to um, do some facts about the Apollo missions. Okay, so here I am uh, increasing my orbit, I mean increasing my uh, velocity until I am uh, circularized um, uh, around Earth, but if I want to reach the moon, the moon's over there, I need to increase my orbit even further. You see that now, instead of, you see that orange line? That's where we are trying to head towards, see? So when we keep increasing the speed, eventually we're going to have this situation where we have something called an encounter with the moon. So now that's the plan. We're going to, uh, so blue, the blue line over here is where we would go, right? If I don't do anything, so the engine's cut off. If I don't do anything, I'll crash back into onto Earth. But now uh, the plan is to make this burn. It tells me I need to burn for 45 seconds uh, and I need to burn for 45 seconds in about one and a half minutes time. And then if I do that exactly as planned in this computer, then I will reach this orange line. This orange line shows me that I'm going to fly all the way up and then have a moon encounter here with uh, this purple purple moon, yeah? And they call it the MUN, the MUN, <laughs> the M-U-N, because this is a simulated version of the Earth. It is not actual Earth. Uh, actual Earth is much bigger and much harder to fly from. So obviously this is a simulation that is made to make uh, space flight easier. Okay, we can't really see anything. 
but that's okay. We're going to ignite our engines very soon. All right, we've run out of fuel. And now next stage is coming up. And then let's have a look at the map again. You can see here that blue line is where we are heading towards and the, um, the orange line is what we've planned, right? So you see the blue line is growing and growing. Eventually, it's going to reach that orbit, that nice circular orbit, uh, like when we were parking the satellite around the Earth. But instead of stopping there, see? Oh, normally we would stop there, but now we're keeping on going. We keep growing that blue line until it's going to interact, uh, intercept the orbit of the moon. There we go. See? Now I've shut off the engines and we are on our way to reaching lunar orbit. Okay. This is called the lunar transfer stage. The lunar transfer uh, uh, in real life with the um, Apollo astronauts took about three days. Okay, So um, it's, uh, it's a long journey and um, there's nothing to do. Yeah, You just uh, sit there with all your mates, um, your astronaut friends uh, talking to each other and radioing back, back to Earth talking about the mission. Uh, but then it's a three-day wait and then um, at the end of the three days, you have to do some really precise maneuvering so that you stay in lunar orbit. Fly to Mars. Oh, that's a, that's a good suggestion, Vicky. I'm not sure if I am ready to fly to Mars. Well, I mean, I like to clarify that I am totally ready to fly to Mars. I'm not ready to be able to come back from Mars because that is a very, very difficult mission to go to Mars and come back from Mars. <laughs> All right. Yes, Neil, that's excellent, Evan. Yeah, Neil Armstrong is the first man to set foot on the moon, on, on Apollo 11. So uh, um, uh, very impressive feat. Uh, that happened uh, in 1969, and it is um, uh, uh, one of the crowning achievements of the, the Apollo program. Let's have a look at this. So we are heading towards uh, the moon. Uh, but we don't need this mesh cone anymore because we don't have any atmosphere. We're going to break apart the nose cone. And now we have our spacecraft here. For our spacecraft, I'm going to deploy all the solar panels so that we've got some nice and electricity so that our astronauts can uh, make a sandwich or uh, uh, you know, watch Netflix. Ooh, I almost pressed the wrong button there. If I press that button, I would have opened the parachutes, which would mean that I would have no parachutes when I want to come back to Earth. That would be very, very bad. Okay. So like I said, we have our astronaut inside this module, and then we still have some fuel for a big rocket over here. By the time we land on the moon, we're not going to have much of a rocket left. Uh, but we're still going to have, hopefully, hopefully enough, to uh, fly all the way back to Earth. Because you don't need a rocket to be as big on the, to go from the moon to Earth, because the moon has less gravity, less atmosphere. You don't need as big of a rocket to fly from moon to the Earth. But from the Earth to the moon, it's a completely different story. The Earth is bigger, it's harder to fly from, and also there's a lot of air resistance. So that is why uh, the rocket that lands on the moon doesn't have to be so big. All right, let's uh, speed up some time. Whee! All right. So here we are about, you see that, that orange line? That is the path, <clears throat> excuse me, is, that's the path that we're gonna take around the moon. There's the moon right now. So the moon is already starting to exert its uh, forces onto my spacecraft. What am I going to do when I reach... Okay, let's, let's speed up time a little bit more just to see. Okay. When I reach the periapsis of my 
uh, moon encounter, I'm going to slow my aircraft, my spacecraft down because we're going really quickly. If I keep heading towards that speed, I won't actually orbit the moon. I'll just fly like slingshot away from it. So now I need to decrease my speed until I am circularizing around the moon. So let's have a Let's have a look at this. Good. All right. Whoa, something is. Uh, okay. Okay. So uh, we are a little closer to the moon than I anticipated. All right. Going to have to circularize. Hmm. Hold on for a second, because right now we're we're not actually about to orbit the moon. We are heading for a collision course for the moon, and that's not good. It's not good at all. There we go. Okay, let's do a course correction here, and then, uh, yeah. You know what? Let's 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 see what happens. Let's see what happens. Do a course correction here. All right. So 15 minutes. I'm sure I can do this. I'm just speeding up time to one. Uh, just looking at the numbers down the bottom, you see how it says uh, no time in T minus? That's the time that I need to wait until I can do my burn. And a burn is just firing the rockets. All right. All right. This is looking good. Ah, much better. Much better, much better. All right. Now we're going to go to the next part to burn closer to the moon. So just like when we were doing an orbit before, instead of increasing our speed, we're now trying to decrease our speed. All right, 24 seconds. And then I want you to watch this blue line. See right now, if I don't do anything, I'm just going to whiz past the moon. But I need to uh, burn now so that I'm following the orange line, which is going to put me around the moon instead. Two, three, two, burn, and now we're around the moon. Good. But just because we're around the moon doesn't mean that we are safe, because now we're going to find a place to land on the moon. So, let's try to find a place to land, huh? See, the moon is very, very rough. There's not many smooth places, so we are going to... Decrease our speed around here and maybe land around about there. You know what? Why not? Ooh, almost out of fuel as well. All right. Any questions so far? Please crash. No, don't. We can't. We can't crash. Can't crash this time. I mean, we can't crash on the moon this time. Any questions about um, uh, the Apollo programs or rockets? Anything like that? All right, let's have a look. All 
Okay, so now the aircraft, the spacecraft is turning towards our maneuver node. And then it's going to fire our engines again. There we are. All right, so now <clears throat> if I don't do anything, it's going to crash on the moon. But of course, I'm not going to crash despite what everyone wants in the chat. I know you want me to crash, but that's not going to be a fun lesson if I crash, okay? All right. Ah! Okay, all right. Almost sped up time too fast. Almost, almost fulfilled some of those wishes from those twisted kids. All right, let's do this. Uh, we're 40,000 meters above the moon. 30,000. Okay, this looks like a uh, good spot to land. Maybe I'll just land right on that, right on that crater. All right, decreasing my speed. See my orbit speed right there. Oh, I've run out of fuel. Okay. Uh, better, better detach that. Detach? Yes. All right. So long, on final stage. Okay, we're going to release our landing gear. And then you can see as the, uh, the part that I don't want to crash on the moon. Yeah. Okay, this is going way too fast. Um, I need to slow down. Slow! Slow down! Slow down! Oh, oh no, 80 meters a second. Okay, okay. This, this is the, this is really tense. By the way, guys. So do you see that rocket explode? That could have been me. That could have been me. All right, let's... All right, absolute silence, everyone. Stop shaking my chair. <laughs> what do you mean I can't? I can't go back? Oh no, that yeah yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how we go back. Okay. So in in the real life Apollo missions. Yes, and we have landed on the moon. Welcome. See, there's Earth in the background. And I'm going to climb out of my spacecraft. <laughs> yes, we've landed on the moon. All right, I'm going to climb out of my spacecraft and prove that I was here because what is a moon landing without jumping around on the moon? Okay, look, look at this. When I jump on the moon... I get a lot higher than I was on Earth, right? Bing, bing. Okay, I'm going to plant a flag just to show that we reached here. All right. You're going to go, CA was here. All right. Here we are. This is the CA flag. Oh, look at her. She's like saluting the flag. Excellent. Welcome everyone to the moon. But now how do I get back home? How do I get back to the Earth? In real life, in the Apollo missions, what they did was they kept half of the spacecraft orbiting the moon, um, uh, the command module uh, that they called Columbia, orbiting the moon. And um, uh, what happened was that uh, one, one person was looking after that module and then only two astronauts would actually set foot on the moon. So that's why that even though there were three astronauts, uh, only two of them uh, actually land, uh, get to mo uh, jump around on the moon. Uh, and the last one was looking after the part of the rocket ship that is still in, in orbit around the moon. And then when it's time to go, then they lift off off the moon and then reattach 
onto um, onto that spacecraft and then go back home together. So there is still danger ahead, people, because going back home is not easy. Going back home is still a very, very tall order. We are going to try our best to go home. Okay. All right. Say goodbye to the moon, everyone, because we are going to try and head back home. Taking off from the moon is much easier than taking off on Earth, right? We're going to head towards the west uh, and orbit the moon and head back to Earth. This is how much fuel we have. If we run out of fuel before we re reach Earth, then we die. If we go back to Earth and the angle is too sharp, then uh, because we don't have um, much protection from the friction of the air, then we also die. Uh, if we go and um, the parachutes fail, then we also die. So there's a lot of danger ahead. Let's have a look at uh, what our height is at the moment. We need to orbit around about 40,000 meters. All right. So we are taking off from the moon. We're going to make an orbit around the moon here. And then we're going to head back to Earth, potentially, if we have enough fuel, right? Have we got any questions? This is the final part of, um, <laughs> this is giving, <laughs> oh, don't be disappointed that I didn't crash. There's still, there's still a chance of that happening. All right, let's, uh, let's continue. Bing, bing. All right, we are now going to circularize around the moon. Look at my fuel, it's slowly depleting. It's very stressful. And this is the part where they would dock with the spacecraft that is orbiting around the moon um, in real life. But because this is a computer game simulation, it is not as um, important that I do that. All right, let's uh, try to... Is that going to make me go closer to the Earth? Yeah, that looks okay. How much? 198. Okay, all right. We're going to burn at the other side of the moon. Warp. Has anyone got any questions about Alexei or um, the history of rockets? All right, here we are. Getting closer and closer. All right, one minute until we do our burn, our trans-Earth trans -earth maneuver. That means we're going to move towards the Earth. Whoa. The moon is covering everything at the moment. Three, two, one. Okay. All right, let's have a look at the map again. So now I have reached escape velocity from the moon okay reach escape velocity from the moon and we're going to speed up time to see where we're going to end up and see that here we are going to add a maneuver to try to reach the earth we're only just going to have enough fuel i think so if you wanted me to crash, I'm sorry. We might reach Earth anyway. So look, 16,000 meters. 
13,000. Okay, so we will do a burn here. So you can see the blue line is where, what would happen if I ran out of fuel right now. Uh, this is where I would end up. I'd just be orbiting around the Earth forever and ever and ever, never reach the Earth, right? Let's have a look. Make sure we keep um, all the chatter uh, really wholesome, okay guys? We gotta make sure that when you're typing uh, chat in YouTube, other people can read it. So make sure that uh, we try to keep things really, really polite, okay? Okay, let's have a look at this. Two minutes until the burn, one minute until the burn. Oh, Three, two. Okay, now we're going to try to do our descent into into Earth. Okay, it's looking good. Alright, where's the earth? Where's the earth? Oh, there it is. Here we are. Eee. Um, Why is it in the dark? Where are we? <laughs> it's so dark. Okay, let's have a look. Are we going to land in the dark? No, we're going to land in the sunlight. Good. Okay, let's uh, fire off our engines. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, we're reaching the atmosphere earlier than predicted. Uh, you see this red bar? That means that I am overheating. Okay. This it still looks okay. Still looks okay. I'm reaching the sunlight. Still looks okay. The other part of my, uh... My ship exploded. It's a good thing I detached it. Uh, am I gonna make it to see another day? Oh, this is this is the uh, the the moments of terror or the the minutes of terror that people always talk about when they're about to land back on on the Earth. Whoa! Yes! Our parachutes have worked! There we go. Ah, safe. We are safe, everyone. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us for this lesson on how rockets work. I hope you enjoyed our brief trip uh, into orbit, our, our brief trip to the moon. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe, okay? So um, I hope you guys had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun flying this rocket. So I will see you again next time, okay? Bye-bye.